Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Today we're going to give you a breakdown of the most important blockchain events of July. Once again, Facebook's Libra stole the spotlight, but we also have a few important regulatory and adoption developments that we'd like to share with you. Here's what happened in July. We publish three videos every month, two in-depth explorations into the fascinating world of blockchains, and one video where we summarize the most important events of the previous month. If you want to stay up to date with our content, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit that little bell to always get notified when we drop a new video. Also, please be sure to check out our Medium blog at medium.com slash at block essence. See the link in the description below for details. Now, let's talk about the news and happenings of July 2019. Over the course of July, Libra co-founder David Marcus was testifying in front of both House and Senate Financial Service Committees and has faced some hard questions on Libra's purpose and functionality, as well as Facebook's role in running it. What was particularly interesting about the hearings was that the members of Congress displayed impressive knowledge of cryptocurrencies and blockchain in general. A few politicians also expressed positive feelings towards Bitcoin as a decentralized ecosystem. That being said, many commentators believe that David Marcus gave mostly evasive and vague responses. His go-to strategy was to downplay Facebook's role in the project, arguing that the primary purpose of Libra Foundation is to create an environment in which users don't have to trust Facebook to benefit from the coin. Marcus repeatedly pushed the narrative in which Libra's main goal was providing banking services to the unbanked, a claim that was called into question during the hearings. Mark Zuckerberg has also separately reinforced that sentiment by insisting that he's devoted to bringing regulators on board, however long it takes. Meanwhile, a Japanese financial service company, Monex Group, owners of the CoinCheck crypto exchange, have applied to participate in the Libra project. They're joining a pool of 28 other partners who have signed a non-binding agreement to buy the equivalent of 10 million in Libra investment tokens, LIT, and become members of the association. Check out the entire video devoted to Libra here. More good adoption news is coming from various market segments. TradeLens, a joint venture between IBM and Maersk focused on applying blockchain technology to supply chains, has acquired the membership of a German container group, Hapag Lloyd, and Singaporean Ocean Network Express, ONE. This is a huge step forward for TradeLens and blockchain adoption in general as now over 50% of sea shipped cargo will be tracked using the platform. In the banking sector, Australia's three biggest banks, Westpac, ANZ, and CBA, have teamed up with mall owners, the Century Group, to test out IBM blockchain to optimize the relationship between the mall and the retailers. Currently, the communication is primarily based on paper documents, and bringing it to the blockchain would be a huge step in terms of efficiency. It is important to note, though, that at the current time, the three banks are not looking into launching any coins or tokens. By now, Samsung has been a steady fixture in our monthly recap episodes because of their investments into blockchain companies. Their addition of native crypto wallets in their Galaxy line and rumors of a Samsung coin being launched at some point in the future, now in a move that clearly confirms their interest in the market. They're releasing an Ethereum-based SDK. The kit is intended as a holistic tool for dApps and other blockchain apps and could simplify the management of blockchain accounts and transactions. The SDK will also add functionality for cryptocurrency remittance within its user interface. So far, we haven't had a lot of news on oil companies joining the blockchain game. Until now, petroleum giant Shell has recently invested in LO3, a US-based startup that aims to democratize the energy sector. The use cases for their Exergy blockchain include peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, energy hedging for businesses, virtual power plants, and dynamic electric vehicle charging. The investment sum remains undisclosed. And finally, we're seeing yet another application of blockchain for tracking fresh produce. Thailand's largest durian exporter, Queen, has announced cooperation with Dimoto, a collaborative commerce startup from Singapore. The cooperation is aimed at tracking the notoriously pungent fruit. Over 4 million fresh durians will be tagged and traced as they move from Thailand to other parts of Asia. July also saw a few significant regulatory moves. Blockstack, a decentralized computing platform, has become the first crypto token offering to attain a Reg A plus status. Check out our video explaining what it means. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's ruling expands the access to the offering to the general public and confirms that the token should be considered an investment vehicle. Blockstack described the ruling as a huge step forward for decentralized applications, internet security, and privacy. Boffin, 
Germany's financial regulator has given a green light to Fundament, a secretive Berlin-based blockchain startup, to establish a tokenized real estate-backed bond. Having acquired regulatory approval, they are able to offer $280 million worth of bonds to retail investors anywhere in the world without the need for minimum investment restrictions. However, the underlying security is known as a closed-end real estate blind pool, meaning that, at this stage, the project is not required to be tied to any actual development projects. In a major setback for trust in cryptocurrency wallet technology, Plus Token's wallet creators have disappeared along with an estimated of 3 billion stored in their customers' wallets. On June 27th, users began reporting the inability to retrieve funds from their wallets. If the funds are not retrieved, the scandal will be history's largest ever exit scan. So that's it for our summary of July's events in crypto and blockchain space. Stay tuned for our next episode in which we will take a deep dive into IOTIX. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. Before you go, please know that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. See you in the next one.